Hey guys, welcome to the channel. This is the video guide series of the RC streamer. In this video, I'm going to show you how to connect the RC streamer to the average 12 1 DAC using HDMI I2S cable. Um, the two units are built in the same form factor using full aluminum chassis. Both units are available in black or silver color. The unit that I have here obviously are in black color. Right, let me just flip it to the back. Both units comes with I2S port over HDMI. Please do not be confused with this HDMI port with the typical multimedia devices available on the Blu-ray or your television. They are not compatible. The HDMI I2S port on the Dynaflip devices are purpose-built I2S port. If you are unsure whether this port is for you and compatible with your device or not, please reach out to us. We will be able to assist you. To connect the I2S port of the streamer and the deck together, all you need is a short HDMI cable. We recommend cable length less than or equal to one meter. Uh, this is the pretty uh, thin and budget uh, budget friendly cable, but it works well as a HDMI I2S cable. Uh, I wouldn't go to the debate whether you need to buy purpose-built HDMI I2S cable or not, but what I'm showing you right now is a typical high quality HDMI cable less than or equal to one meter will work just fine. Connect the two units using HDMI cable in this fashion. And of course, you need other connection, but I'll not be doing it right now. I'll just flip it to the back and do it on my desk because the cable are kind of short here. Connect the RG45 cable to the home network. Connect the power cord to the RC streamer. As soon as the power cord is connected, the standby LED lights up to, LS to tell us that the unit are in standby mode and the power is applied. Connect the analog output to the deck left and right channel, make sure they are connected correctly. Now, I'll power up the RC streamer. As the RC streamer power up, the LED flashes from the left to the right. It is a startup sequence and it takes about three to five seconds for the unit to fully start up. And because I have the network cable connected to the back of the unit, the network LED here will show us the network is connected, the light is turned on, and the home the network will be able to detect the RC streamer on the same network. On this demonstration here, I'll use Rune. I'll hit on the source button to select Rune and let the LED stop at Rune. So Rune LED turn on and Net LED turn on. So if you have your Rune core connected to the same network, it should detect RC streamer right away. Right, for I2S pinout, the the I2S pinout is required to be configured on both units to work together. Again, I2S has no industrial standard. Dynaflips go extend the compatibility of the I2S pinout by using um, several push button as well as LED status to allow you to configure the I2S pinout of the unit. I know it's kind of complex as we do not have a display on the unit for you to see which configuration you are in and it's kind of confusing to use the buttons as well as the LED status on the front panel to do this configuration. Dynaflips could have just fixed the I2S pinout on the RC streamer and on their deck so that both units will just it will work just plug and play to that extent. But having the I2S pinout on the devices with, is with the good intention to make the Dynaflip deck as well as the streamer has bigger compatibility or widen the compatibility of the device I2S mm, with other devices available on the market. Right, I digress. Without further ado, let me just show you how to configure the I2S pinout on the RC streamer. Hit on the setup button once and in setup in configuration mode, the push button meaning as well as the LED status meaning is different from the operation mode. So we are talking about two different modes here. One is operation mode where you will use the RC streamer in normal operation where the LED status correspond to the meaning labeled on the front panel. But in configuration mode, 
the LED status as well as the push button has different meaning. I'm going to show it right. I'm going to show it to you right now. And as you notice, as I hit on the setup button once, the setup LED flashes. It tells us that the RC streamer is in configuration mode. Use these two buttons to navigate to different settings. As I press on the USB uh, button, the LED moves to the left. And I press on the source button, the LED moves to the right. So there are different kinds of settings available on RC streamer that allow you to set different settings on the RC streamer. What we are interested in right now is the I2S pinout configuration. But I will leave the LED on room, which means I2S pinout in configuration mode. And at this point in time, hit on the local button multiple times, and you will see that the USB net and local LED on the second row turn on and off in a fixed pattern. If you know binary or if you are in digital domain, you know that this means 000 to 111. So there are total 8 configuration modes available on the RC streamer to allow you to match the I2S pinout of the RC streamer with the deck that you are connected to. For Dynaflip DAC, I will always recommend you to configure the I2S pinout of the RC streamer to 000. Where the three LED should be off, 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 off. So configure the RC streamer I2S pin up to 000, and after a while, the RC streamer will be back to normal operation mode where you will see the net LED turn on and the last selected input rune LED turn on. So this unit is back to normal operation mode and it is ready to stream music through I2S to this. Every 12-1 DAC that is connected using a short HDMI cable. Now turn on the average 12 DAC and select I2S input. So in just in case the unit was not selected to I2S, just hit on this I2S button and the input will go to I2S. Average 12-1 comes with I2S pinout configuration as well. If you have the HDMI cable connected uh, is a typical HDMI cable. The compatible mode of the I2S pinout of both units should be 000. So how do you configure the I2S pinout on the average 12 DAC? Hit on the mute button and the DAC will go into configuration mode. To configure the I2S pinout of the average 12-1, toggle the I2S button. As I toggle this I2S button, 2x, 4x, and 1x LED turn on and off in a fixed pattern 000 to 111. So again, it uses similar um, philosophy where the LED here tells us different configuration modes of the I2S pinout of the average 12-1. There are total 8 modes. I recommend you to configure the average 12 pin out to 000, where you will work with the RC streamer in mode 000 as well. Right, so after a while, the deck will be back to normal operation mode. So it exists the, the configuration mode and back to normal operation mode, where the last selected input as well as the sampling rate LED will turn on. So this is the, where the confusion lies. Because uh, some customer says, I have been configuring the I2S mode to 000, but why is it the 1x LED will turn on after a while? So uh, it is an indication that the deck is back to operation mode. So it exits the configuration mode and back to normal operation mode where the sampling rate LED turn on to tell you it is mm, back to the last used sampling rate. Right. The two units are configured uh, I2S pinout mode to mode 000 and you should be able to play music using uh, the rune call. Rune should detect the RC streamer uh, as we have set it up just now and I'll use this tablet to show you uh, how it plays music using rune call. Hang on a second. Right. So just in case you have uh, rune call was not uh, configured to detect the RC streamer, you may go to this menu under setting, there's an audio uh, tab here where it set up the rune call to detect or to output the rune uh, data stream to different devices. So rune will detect 
the RCA streamer and you may configure this RCA streamer, enable it and use it as an output device of, of the Rune call. If you have multiple devices available in Rune, uh, or rather if you are familiar with Rune, uh, this should not be an issue. I always recommend uh, the test tone available on Tidal. The album is called Audio Tone Test. Uh, for some reason, it is not showing right now, uh, but I have it here. So this Audio Tone Test utility allows you to play some test tone where you can check the left-right channel as well as the in-face and out-of-face particularly on the I2S pinout whether it's configured correctly. So it's very important for you to go through this. Uh, it's a one-time setting. It is, required you, it, it is required to go through this to make sure the left-right channel, in-face and out-of-face are played correctly using I2S. Right, um, let me just play the left-right channel test and we should be able to hear music playing through my preamp and my active loudspeaker. Left, right, left, right, right, center, center is played left, correctly. Right, center. Right, I will skip to the next one. In the face, it, it takes some time because I upsampled this to DSD. You notice the DSD LED turn on here, right? And our face, our face, the music will sound like wide, much wider. It is like in a huge. Uh, space with a call. So this test allows you to test PCM or DSD by, by using the upsampling um, feature on Rune Call to make sure the I2S pinout is set correctly. Uh, DNAP has been trying to standardize the I2S pinout on their devices to make sure mode 000 on both devices will work. But just in case this mode doesn't produce the correct sound, you should always configure the I2S pinout to find out the correct mode to use in your system. Uh, this is um, one of the reasons was some of the purpose-built I2S cable has internal wiring swapped as compared to the H typical HDMI cable. So it's always recommend to go through this test before you listen to the music. Um, just to make sure the I2S pinout is configured correctly before you listen to the music. And one very important point to note is I2S pinout mismatch will generate noise. So if this is the first time you are configuring I2S in your system, please always turn down the volume to minimal but audible and perform the tone test carefully. We do not want the excessive loud noise to damage your equipment. Alright, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.